What's up, Falcon fans and non-Falcon fans? Thank you guys for watching this episode. If you guys like this type of content, please hit that like button. Please share with your friends, family, or enemies that you don't like. And always, please subscribe to your boy because it helps out with the YouTube algorithm for some crazy pull of other reasons. Okay, so let's talk about Week 3 against the Seattle Seahawks. They are 1-1. One one it's going to be a little bit different because we're so used to seeing them dominate every game with the running attack and, you know, Russell Wilson just always beasting and feasting on. And they're a really good team. Of course, it's going to feel a little bit different, you know, not having that quarterback there. Now you got Geno Smith, who is not a great quarterback, but he's not a bad quarterback. He's a pretty average quarterback, in my opinion, but he can still be deadly. So don't ever underestimate any opponent because Seattle fans will tell us for sure. You, you better watch out. Okay, so let's just dive into what I think what's kind of the key things where they can win or we can win. And I think it's kind of interesting to see that both teams are kind of struggling right now. And so let's just dive into the video. Obviously, I am not a Seattle Seahawks fan, so I don't know every critical detail what's going on with the offense, but I want to talk about some good things that we have to watch out as Falcons fans, and hopefully for you Seattle Seahawks fans can tell us in the comment section below if I'm, am I right or am I wrong, or do I really don't know my stuff. But what I've been reading on, online with Seattle's uh, network and what, uh, you know, everything else trying to be posted, um, they're kind of struggling. But let's talk about that later because I just want to talk about the positive. And there are some positives. Like, you know, you got Tyler Lockett, who's still a beast of a freak, you know. Right here, you see on screen, he has 12 receptions for 135 yards, zero touchdowns in, in these two games. But he's still dominant. Like, he's still scary. Like, he's still got the speed. And that's where we have to watch out for those speedsters, right? And, you know, you got DK Metcalf, who's just a freak of a jelly bean, right? Eat nothing but just candy, pure pure gorilla strength, right? And so he's definitely scared me. He's going to have a breakout game at some point. I think it's going to be us because usually we always allow players to have breakout games. And, you know, Metcalf is just, I mean, he, I mean, what, what, you know, like the words to describe this man is just, it's crazy. But, but no, I noticed he kind of been kind of struggling just a tiny bit, but I don't think it's really him. It's the play calls, but that's but that's it. I think Geno Smith is not like I said earlier. I don't think he's a great quarterback. But he's not a but he's not a ex you know bad quarterback. But you know what? He does make some of the plays that really wow me. And against the Denver Broncos, he 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 had three plays where really were shocking. Like wow, he can still pull it off. So yes, he still has an arm. And that's what I also saw a little bit in these um, games where Geno can still win your games as long as you don't you know force the ball in his hands in a way where he has to rely on those two minute drills right because he can instantly throw short yardage plays where i've seen him um, do well uh, you know against the, the the broncos obviously and even a little bit in the 49ers where he just did those little quick six yard passes where you move the chain and that's where i know the seattle seahawks attacking can be a little dangerous so you you can't you know denounce that so now let's talk about why Seattle Seahawks aren't running the ball efficiently enough. And that has to do to their offensive line up front, right? Because they're giving up four sacks, 13 quarterback hits, and two pressures that Geno Smith has to overcome. And it's kind of hard when you're getting pressure in the face. And that's also why the Seattle Seahawks is not running the ball very well these past couple games. Because they're not giving any holes holes. <laughs> not giving up the times to make sure you get the correct holes where the running back could go through. And it's, some of the play calls is kind of a little funky, but we won't dive into that much to greater detail because I don't really know how Pete Carroll's philosophy is when it comes to the running game. Like, you know, like like tick for tack kind of sort of. But I do know that Rashawn Pennington, uh, Travis Homer, and Kenneth Walker the third are all really good running backs. So I don't think it's really on them. I think sometimes I've noticed they kind of hesitated for that quick second. But it's kind of hard to really notice when they're trying to get through the line. But what I see is they can't even get into the, to the hole because all the offensive line are not even kind of properly, you know, using their firm positions in, in, in a sense. And you really have to look at each snap count to really understand why the Seattle Seahawks are not breaking really long run um, rushing yards for for these great backs, and you can see here on the stats line where really you don't see, the longest yards is 26, so that's not really good because Seattle's known for the running game, right? For the past 10 years, all they do is run the ball first, right? Until you know they got that let's you know let Russ cook you know situation happen. So 
that's really why uh, Seattle's offense in general is just kind of uh, lacking. And that's why uh, DK Metcalf is kind of, you know, it, it kind of ended with the media in the sense where he's not frustrated. He understands there's problems, but he has to deal with it. And, you know, you got to respect a man like that where he won't, you know, he absolutely won't throw anybody under the bus. None of his coaching staff or none of his players or his teammates, perhaps. And he's just going to take it all on his own. So you got to respect the man for that. So that's one reason why I think that uh, Seattle is really struggling. If they can fix that offensive line, oh, yeah, they're going to be a good team. Trust. So I have no doubt they're going to fix that later down the line. I'm just lucky that they haven't figured out here now. So I think we have the advantage when it comes to our, our pass rushing and our blitz, if we can perfect them pretty well. If we can confuse Geno Smith, I think we can have a, a better chance and dominate in all four phases of the quarters. So that's just my take. So now let's talk about the other side of the ball for Seattle is their defense. So obviously when it comes to Seattle's defense, we all know the Legion of Boom. Yes, I know that's a long time ago, but most people who are not Seattle Seahawks fans would know the Legion of Boom. Now they do have some good couple of players after the Legion of Boom was over. Now were they all all-stars? I don't think so. And surprisingly, I didn't realize uh, the Seattle Seahawks defense was kind of this bad. Um, I thought they would be pretty good in the mid-pack, but no, they're they're pretty they're pretty terrible, and mostly because of that run game they 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 let loose against you know the Broncos and the 49ers, where they allowed over 103 you know rushing yards and 189 total rushing yards. Um, so that's pretty bad. And you can see here on the screen where on the left side is against the Broncos, where you know Melvin Gordon just. Did a pretty decent job. Then, you know, you got the Williams from last year, the rookie. He did pretty good. And then Russell Wilson, surprised he didn't use his legs efficiently. But, you know, that's something else. And then, you know, week two, of course, the 49ers. We all know that um, Kyle Shanahan loves to use the play action and zone run scheme. So we all know that. You know he's going to just tear up every anybody. And we could definitely uh, replicate that because we saw, we seen it in week one against the Saints. So we know we can run for over 100 yards. Hopey 200 yards this game because, oh yeah, it, it was terrible. You know, the 49ers, were just, they were just letting anybody walk, walk over them, or in this case, run all over them. You know, especially with Debo Samuel, who's not even really a, a traditional running back, but he just went hand slice on them. Then you got, you know, Wilson, who also literally was a beast from last year, so you know he could pull up some points. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo got a touchdown. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, you know, he, he he's a little freak, man, for real. And then you got you know, um, Kyle Yeschek, Yuschek, I always forget his name. But you know, he's one of my favorite uh, fullbacks to really watch. And I miss having that dominant uh, fullback for the Falcons. But that, besides the point, uh, Seattle only only got one sack and four quarterback hits in the past two weeks. So that's something pretty, um, um, I, I, you know, I'm so I'm so confounded because I really don't know what is the the base packages for Seattle's defense, what their cover scheme is all about. I just know from a far distance, that's just not good. That's just not going to give you the chance, the ability to win these games. And I know the, the first game was only by one point, and then the second, it wasn't really a blowout, but it was a pretty decent margin, right? And so I think we have a chance to put up some points because I do like Drake London. He's shown everybody that was doubting him when we drafted him that, yeah, he's a solid pick because Kyle Pitts is not getting, you know, the returns that we thought we we, we, oh, we, sh we think that he should, right? And that's because I think Marcus Mariota just like uh, Drake London a little bit more than Kyle Pitts right now, but I hopefully that would change in this game. Uh, I think Marcus Mariota can definitely just run the de uh, the defense if, if for one player I will mention in the next subject where I think he might have a little struggle with but I do think Arthur Smith will get a good game plan to really work all of our running backs into fruition and to make sure we ground and pound the Seattle Seahawks defense because they have not shown anybody that they can stop the run and that's a good thing for us so I'm really looking forward to that 
And I also want to say that I do like their young pass rushers. And I know they got a couple of front four guys that are not really big big guy names, but they give you an average five sacks per year. So if you measure all that for four to five guys, that's probably an average of 20 plus to 30 sacks. Uh, per season, so that's not bad, um, and that's what Dean Peens is trying to do as well. Where we don't want to get one guy with ten sacks, we want to get like seven guys with six through, or really, you know, like really like three to seven sacks, you know. And that's how we want to use our defense as well. So yeah, now let's go to our last topic, and that's the player we have to watch out for. This is a young hawk we have to watch out. Jordan Brooks is just beginning his domination against the West. Absolutely, he is a beast. And I know a lot of people were kind of making fun of him or were surprised or shocked or yada, yada, yada. Even I was like, mm, why would you pick him, you know, you know, uh, in the 27 overall pick in the 2000, I think, um, 2020 draft? And But you know what? He has done lovely things for Seattle. That includes his grand campaign in 2021 with over 184 tackles, one sack, one fumble recovery, and five pass deflections. So he's on point. And he's already on point. And this year with over, well, not really over, but with 23 and 17 tack solos and six assists. So that's pretty good. So he's already going to be dominant. Probably a leading tacker in the top five this year. I guarantee you with that. Because the stats doesn't lie. And the stats tells me and shows you guys that Brooke has missed on 8% of his attempt of tackles this year. So he only probably missed one or two. And that's crazy to think about open tackles. And we've seen a lot of linebackers just miss on these open tackles. So you know he's going to bring down the fort. And that's scary. And also, Brooke, he's also the he was just he was just named this year. I'm pretty sure that that he's the single caller for the defense. So he's the captain of this defense. So for a young man like that already, yeah, he's good. So we cannot let number 56 make those calls because he will absolutely ball on us and we can't afford that and so for the third one that's kind of pretty interesting to talk about is how will Marcus Mariota fare when Brooks will be spying on him you know when we're gonna do these run play calls for the quarterback situation and Brooks been covering Russell Wilson and he'd be covering for Jimmy G you know before um Oh, it was the after. I, I always get my pronunciations wrong. Before, you know, Trey Lance went down. Uh, but, you know, but, you know, he's still good. So he got to be dead because I, I know that um, Brooks is a lot faster than Marcus Mariota right now. So I will tell you straight up in the future, myself and every other fan, he will dominate this. And he probably will, will make those you know, three and twos or three and ones or three and fours. Where we're not gonna get it. I guarantee that there will be a play like that where he's just gonna rush and we won't get the first down. That's a no go, air go, tight go, wherever you wanna go, bro. Okay? So, yes, he's absolutely dominant. So, in conclusion, I think we have a really good chance winning this game. I have us going 27 to 10. I think we're going to score three touchdowns and two field goals. I think Seattle will score a touchdown and a field goal. I really, really have a strong feeling we will get our first victory. Count on that on in the books. If we don't, well then I will just be uh, confused and abused like everyone else. But I don't think that's going to head in that direction, right? I'm thinking positive thoughts over here. So, if you guys like this type of content, let me know in the sec- uh, comment section below. Uh, give me a like, you know, as always, because I really do want to interact with you guys. And I want to know, is this the type of previews you really are looking forward to? You know, I'm trying to mix and match, matching, you know, highlights and, and just kind of like PowerPoint presentation because I really don't like talking in front of a camera because I'm self-conscious with myself. But uh, on that good note, I'm really excited for this game. I really am. Okay, so... What do Falcons do? We rise up. Wait, what'd I say? <laughs> okay, man. Peace.